What's going on YouTube? Prezi43 here. Um, I am a little bit later than what I would have liked for my next video. Um, today's January 28th. Um, we are four days away from the, um, the ladder resetting and us being able to use restricted Pokemon. Um, I've been doing a lot of like looking and a lot of um, viewing of different streamers and a little bit of testing of my own. I've been struggling this week a little bit, readjusting to my um, new shift that I'm working again. I'm back as a day shift employee um, with the company that I work with. Pre prior to the pandemic happening, I was working 8 p.m. to 4.30, or sorry, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Um, then the pandemic hit, I took some night shifts. I took a different role to help with the COVID relief. Um, and uh, now I'm back to days. Um, and uh, the adjusting my sleep schedule has been challenging. I've been feeling pretty wiped out after work most days. So, um, but I, I wanted to talk about some some team building stuff that you that I want to share with you all for series eight. So this is really exciting, um, really new fun series that we talked about. We ranked our restricted Pokemon in our last video. In this video, we're going to be doing um, some talking about some just to kind of get you guys started with some some teams that you can build off of. Now, ultimately, if you're looking to just play with some of these Pokemon, I think you should pick your favorite one, and I think you should use it. Um, if that means using Lugia, throw a weakness policy on Lugia and Volt Switch into it and go to town. Um, there's, there's the just do something fun that you want to enjoy. I'd rather have people playing with Pokemon that they like rather than listening to me and playing the competitive stuff but for those of you that are looking to be really competitive um i've got some some good places for you to start um i think that uh some of these some of these combinations are tried and true combinations um they work um so before we get into that um I want to talk again real quick about the restricted Pokemon. So this is something I've been noticing is a trend for a lot of people, um, a lot of streamers and a lot of Pokemon content creators are talking and the pressure is on your restricted slot right now because you only get one. Previously in throughout VGC's history, we've seen combinations of restricteds that complement each other well. Kyogre plus Rayquaza, for example. Um, Groudon Xerneas, um, Kyogre Xerneas. Um, a lot of times we saw Xerneas paired with something that could deal with steel types. That's why Groudon was so good with it, right? So um, things that that paired well together. But now you're at we're at this stage where the restricted Pokemon um, you only get one of them right now, and so the pressure's on that restricted Pokemon to be very very good. Um, so my an example of what I'm trying to get at here is Eveltal. In my last video, I talked about Eveltal um, being a really, in my opinion, really strong candidate. Um, so let's go ahead and pull up Eveltal here quick, um, and we'll look at its stats. Um, okay, so here's Eveltal. Eveltal has very, very good stats across the board, very offensive stats. Um, and uh, reasonable bulk as well. Good, really good HP stat. Decent, decent speed stat. Good defenses. Um, let's pull up Moltres Galar. Okay, let's pull this snip up. Let's put them side by side. Okay, so historically, Veltal has been um, a mixed attacker that just essentially has a hundred more stats than Moltres, right? Um, so why would you ever use Moltres over Eveltal? Well, if you had the choice, you would obviously use Eveltal. But in this specific context, you have um, you have Pokemon with very similar bulk capabilities, right? Um, Eveltal is a bit bulkier all around, and specifically on the defensive side of things, because it has a higher defense stat and a higher HP stat. But Moltres is significantly bulkier on the special defensive side, which helps it in some of its matchups. Both of these Pokemon are probably going to be carrying a weakness policy. Um, and so the question remains, um, you're going to be doing some self-proccing weakness policy stuff. The question remains, how much of an upgrade is Eveltal from Moltres? Is it enough to warrant an actual restricted slot on your team? And that's the question people are, are starting to ask themselves when they choose their restricted for the next, however long this is going to be, um, where we only get one. 
do you really want to have your restricted slot be, be Eveltal when you can potentially use Maltrace and have something that's equally, maybe not maybe not quite as good, but like good enough? Like Eveltal, let's say, is an S tier. Maltrace has got to be a B plus, maybe even an A minus compared to Eveltal. So you're trading your 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 gain of statistical gain of of a Pokemon in this in this context is not as high when you start comparing things like. Um, like Kyogre to the best water type or um, Dialga and I made a comparison be between Dialga and Duraludon in my last video. The comparison there is ridiculously different. Um, Dialga is significantly better than Duraludon um, outside of one specific context, which is its ability. Uh, Duraludon's ability is pretty spectacular, but um, the stat statistic wise, like the Pokemon base stat wise, um, Dialga blows Duraludon out of the water. In this case, you have a you have two Pokemon that are bulky weakness policy carriers that you're probably going to be volt switching into. Um, very good abilities. Both both of them have very good abilities. Um, good typing and good damage output. A hundred is is a lot less than one thirty one, but um, their speed tiers might as well be the same. Eveltal might not have to invest as many EVs into speed, but Moltres is is going to be basically the same speed tier. And they're very similar bulk wise so in this specific context you are making a very small upgrade while also taking over your restricted slot on your team and that's that's the that's the conversation here that's the argument that people are making is that in this specific case maybe it's not worth the restricted slot so um i still have eveltal on my radar i'm still going to be using um potentially trying eveltal plus raichu stuff but for now i wanted to jump over into take this take this video into the direction of going over a few team compositions that I think are really good and then also share with you some support Pokemon that I think you should have on your radar that well not necessarily support Pokemon but some non-restricted Pokemon that I think are going to be really good right now um, so let's go ahead and jump over to showdown here first up is the classic Tornogre people refer to it as this is the combination of Torn Tornadus plus Kyogre this team is almost identical to the team that James Bake took third place in the 2019 world championships with um we can pull up his team here um uh that's 2018 i want 2019 there it is so if we go um this is back when you could use two restricted and a mega so obviously things are different but here's james's team so james's team is uh instead of the tapu coco we have um xerneas so xerneas incineroar Tornadus, Kyogre, Kartana, and Amoongus. Okay, um, so if we jump back over here, this team is basically identical, except rather than the Xerneas, we have Coco because we can't have a second restricted Pokemon. Um, I'll just kind of talk through a little bit of why this is a good pairing. Um, so Kyogre is a is a really strong Pokemon, uh, really good special attacking capabilities. Um, Launches off rain boosted water spouts and origin pulses. Probably going to be carrying the mystic water. Um, historically, people have run choice scarf or choice specs um, just to make sure that it gets to move really quickly. Um, but mystic water is kind of nice to not force yourself to lock into a move, um, which is which is one of the things that could potentially be punishing and, and also opens up the option for you to run protect, right? Um, which helps you against things like Rillaboom and whatnot. Um, so Kyogre, um, and then its partner is Tornadus. Tornadus is almost always going to be using Tailwind and Hurricane. The last two moves you can choose between Taunt, Protect, Icy Wind. Um, I think people, some people run, run Rain Dance as well, because you want to be able to reset up your rain, um, without having to switch Kyogre out. Um, so these are some options there. Focus Sash is probably going to be your item. But the whole general idea here is to set up Tailwind and launch Tailwind um, Rain Boosted Water Spouts and Origin Pulses at your opponent's Pokemon. Um, if you, once once this has been dealt with or once you've done enough damage and your Pokemon start to faint, you bring in Kartana at the end and you, um, and you just sweep through your opponent with the Dynamax Kartana. Um, if you happen to get a speed boost with max airstream at the same time as picking up a ko with cartana in the late game and you get a beast boost with attack you can just run over teams uh the, the remaining of the teams this is a really powerful dynamax 
late game data max option that really appreciates being in um being in tailwind for one but two in the rain um right this thing doesn't really get benefit doesn't really lose anything by by being in the rain um so 252 probably 244 to get that even number um and then fours across the board here the reason why you invest more in special defense is one because you're using assault vest but two because you this is a this is a huge increase um 51 to 82 is like a um I mean, you're going up by 30 points, right? Which is 30 over 50 is 60%. You're getting a 60% increase versus, um, you know, if you invested full here, you would only be getting a, you know, 30 over 200 points. So you, you get more out of, out of it this way. The Dynamax helps you mitigate some of your lost damage that you might not be getting through your EVs. But this attack stat's already so high that it doesn't really matter too much. Um, Intimidate Incineroar, because it's really good on this team. Um, I just really, it's just going to be really good in this format, in my opinion. Fake out parting shot. You can, you can choose your last couple of moves. You can go flare blitz. A lot of people like flare blitz. Um, I like flare blitz. I think some people also did some burning jealousy stuff. Um, you, you can get taunt, you can get, uh, darkest lariat. You can get snarl tons of, tons of options here. Um, for item, most people go with a pinch berry, like a guav berry. Um, some people go with citrus berry. Some people go with safety goggles for s sleep switches. There's a lot of different things you can do there. Um, Tapu Koko is a pretty interesting Pokemon. I don't think you necessarily have to have this sloppy Tapu Koko. You could potentially run Reggie Alecki as well. Um, having an electric type on, this, on a team like this is really beneficial. Um, or electric coverage, which Kyogre is not carrying. Um, so being able to have electric coverage somewhere on your team, you could go with um, the life orb and then you could run protect, electro web, thunderbolt, and then um, electro ball or something like that. Um, and then Amoongus to help with your trick room matchup and to put things to sleep and whatnot. Um, previously, Amoongus and Incineroar were really good partners with... Um, with Xerneas to help get off a of Geomancy, but basically this is this is the team. This is what you would run. Cobaberry for all of these max airstreams running around. Um, protect, Sludge Bomb, or Clear Smog is pretty cool. Um, if people are setting up a lot, Clear Smog's better than Sludge Bomb. But Sludge Bomb, Rage Powder for redirection, and Spore. And then probably more on the physical bulk side, but you can, you can choose either one. Um, and you've got uh, you've got a really solid team here. Uh, the reason why I think Coco might be pretty decent, even though it's a little bit of anti-synergy to have electric terrain stopping sleep, is the fairy typing is pretty big right now. Um, giving getting access to another type is is pretty nice on a team like this, and like fairy typing is going to be really good in this upcoming format with a lot of dark types. Um, you know, Moltres Galar is popular, or Shifu's popular, um, Eveltal is popular, Kyogre is popular. Uh, so having a way to having an extra typing for stab purposes and extra damage is really good um but this is this is a really strong take on what people call tornogger that you could definitely start with um i don't i don't necessarily know what the speed would look like i would guess it would be something like this um if you find out that you want to have less speed in favor of bulk you could do that as well but Kyogre is very rarely going to be Dynamaxing anyway. Kyogre just kind of launches. It gets a lot of its value out of its spread attacks. Um, Tornadus covers grass weakness really well for Kyogre, which is which is really nice. Um, you have two grass types that are electric resists and a Regieleki that's also electric resist. So you have those to combat the electric types. But Kartana being a resistance is really big. So I would highly recommend this team if you're looking to play with Kyogre. I think Kyogre is a really good Pokemon, especially in this format. So this is this is what people refer to as Tornogre, and I think it's really strong. I think this is a really good starting place. Um, you could change up a couple of these mods if you want. Amoongus has felt a little bit. Um, I haven't I haven't seen people, and I also haven't brought it myself very often. Um, it's a Trick Room answer, or it's a helpful tool against Trick Room. Um, not an answer, obviously, but it's a helpful tool against Trick Room. And um, it can be really nice, but you're not really taking advantage of Rage Powder on a team like this, right? Um, like you would be with with Xerneas. So it's possible you could switch this Pokemon to something else. 
what that would be, I don't know. Um, but I think that it's a good place to start. You can do some testing and find out what's what's feeding you and then switch accordingly. The next team is um, just a Reggie Gigas, Maltres Galar, Zazian team, right? This is um, this is a team that Aaron Schrailer featured on Wolf Glick's YouTube channel. Um, very similar team, except he had Eveltal in this slot. Um, that has multiple modes with Zacian to, to kind of clean things up. Um, Maltres Galar is going to have the weakness policy. Um, probably going to be Nasty Plot. We'll protect for sure. Nasty Plot. Um, I should protect for sure, but now I'm actually not sure. Um, Air Slash and Fiery Wrath. The other move that Maltres Galar gets that's really good is Taunt. Um, so that would be um, an option as well. Light Clay Regieleki is pretty good on, on a team like this. You can play around with the EVs a little bit. Um, I don't know what the new consensus is on Reggie Lecky, if I'm being honest. Uh, I would incline to think that on a, on a set like this, you don't need to be max speed. Um, but I know that some people are max speed. Um, this could also just be Raichu, too. Um, you sacrifice a bit of damage with Raichu, but you you, uh, you get a better ability for... If, if the new thing with Reggie Lecky is to always be super offensive and fast and, and Dynamaxing... Raichu's going to get you a lot. Um, so, Moltres Galar, Regieleki, Life Orb, Regigigas. Pretty easy EV spread. Just max, max, jolly. Um, usually people will run... Not, not everyone runs Protect. I like Protect. Um, get Impact, Ice Punch, High Horsepower. These are the main moves that you get for coverage. Um... Those guys on that in, in the GS Cup ran a really interesting wheezing spread where they ran Focus Sash, and then they ran a max speed, max HP wheezing. Um, with still with Protect, but this was for fast Will O Wisps after getting a special after getting a speed drop with Reggie Gigas, um, Sludge Bomb for your attack and Taunt. Um, Zacian is going to be. Um, there's a couple of different things running around with Zacian. I personally think that Fairy Stab is very unnecessary. I just you just don't really need it. It's it's obviously Fairy is really good, but you know that your Pokemon's insanely strong when you stop having to use Fairy Stab on it. When Fairy Stab is really good, right? But Behemoth Blade, uh, Close Combat, and Wild Charge. This basically gives you all the coverage you need. Um, some people are running Substitute over Wild Charge. On a set like this, I, are, are, with Zacian filling this role that it is on this team, I don't necessarily think that that Substitute's good on this set. It, it probably is still fine, but Zacian plays cleanup a lot of the times, um, and so or it goes in the back, and so a lot of times this is, this is just going to be good enough. Um, and then Incineroar... I think Citrus Berry on a set like this. I think you could give Incineroar Taunt as well. Um, fake Out, Flare Blitz, Parting Shot, Taunt. Um, and then go Bulk. Um, dark dark coverage is really important in general in restricted formats, but you have it on Moltres, so you don't necessarily need to have an offensive dark move on Incineroar. But this would be a really good Zacian team in my opinion. You've got some different modes here. You've got... Reggie, Alecki, Moltres, Incineroar, Zacian. You've got, and any combination of those. Um, Zacian would usually go in the back, but you could lead Moltres plus Alecki or Moltres plus Incineroar. Um, and then you can go with Gigas, Weezing, Moltres, Zacian. Um, you can go with Alecki, Gigas, Weezing, Zacian, which is a bit scarier, um, but possible just because this Weezing has no damage capabilities whatsoever. Um, not that it normally would, but it, it's not going to live very many hits. So, um, if you bring a Lecky and Weezing with only Gigas and Zacian to deal damage, then you're kind of in a bit of a of a pickle, so be be mindful of that. Really preserve your Zacian if that's the case. <clears throat> but that's this team. That's what I would recommend for this. Um, this is a really good place to start. Zacian goes on a lot of teams, but I really, I particularly liked watching them play this team because I thought it was really strong. Um, and Moltres, like I, like we talked about earlier in this video, it's a reasonable substitution for Eveltal, right? 
So that's that team. Um, Sun. I'm going to be doing some stuff with Sun probably initially in this format. Um, I have Focus Ash on Venusaur right now with Sleep Powder, but I'm probably going to change this to just running Protect, Earth Power, and then running some other item here. Um, this this is really good. This is a really good core. I think Stack Attack is pretty good right now, actually. Um, you do double, you do triple up on your water weakness, but you you have you you still have two slots to run this with, um, and you also have Venusaur to help against water types as well. But Groudon serves a lot of roles on a team like this. So if we finish off what I was what I was initially thinking would be kind of a, an interesting set, um, I think Thunderous could go on this team. Basically, you want to have... Uh, I, I did some thoughts on some different things here. Um, I thought about Rotom Wash on a team like this. I thought about Zapdos. I thought about Thunderous. I thought about Charizard. Um, but basically, any, any fast Airstream user... Um, is really good on uh, alongside Groudon. So you you this team basically is here to to highlight um, Groudon's Groudon's strengths, right? Um, there's three different things you can do with Groudon on a team like this. Um, protect Wild Charge. Uh, it doesn't get Brave Bird. Doesn't no. It gets uh, um, what's the flying move it gets, guys? Um. Hello? Oh, fly. Duh. Um, and then secret power. And then max, max, jolly. <clears throat> really easy spread. I don't. I haven't figured out a good Groudon spread yet, I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm assuming that it's going to be adamant with a little bit of speed investment. Probably aim for your jumps here. I think they happen 156 and then again at 236. And then s bulk, bulk, bulk. Obviously, we have way more EVs than we can play around with here, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Um, and uh, item, you could do weakness policy. You could do um, assault vest. You could do... Um, I'm not... Uh, I was experimenting with a minus speed nature one here. I'm going to go protect, press with blades, fire punch, sword stance, I think is really good. Um, you could go with a lumberry so you don't get burned now that you're not a fire type anymore. But basically, this team can do three things. It can it can lead Groudon Venusaur and go for Max Venusaur, deal damage, get your um, get your Vine Lash going, get some chip damage going. Um, it can go with Thunderous plus Groudon because Thunderous Thunderous and Groudon is particularly strong in my opinion because this 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 allows we saw how good Thunderous was alongside a Pokemon like um, like your Shifu where it punished intimidates half of her shifu isn't weak to intimidate and you can't intimidate the half of her shifu that is weak to it without powering up thunderous so this is the same logic you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to intimidate my groudon without powering up my thunderous basically um so you lead you lead groudon thunderous you dynamax thunderous you go for max airstreams and you um you push damage that way groudon appreciates speed boosts especially with a move like precipice blades um and then you have a trick room mode with stack attacka you have incineroar on this team and then a water type would be ideal we technically could use tapu fini i don't hate this idea um doesn't really cut doesn't really compound any of our weaknesses we actually have all unique types on this team um with this with this sort of configuration the only thing we have a little bit of difficulty with is water but we have two ways to hit water super effectively and we have um, two resistances to water, so it kind of offsets, right? Um, but then you have, then you can max Groudon on the, on the Trick Room mode if you want. That's why I, I need to experiment a bit more with a speed stat for Groudon that, um, that makes sense. Um, for both Trick Room and for, uh, Airstream boosts. So, I think this is a really solid team. I don't, I'm not sold on the, on these two slots, but basically the moral is, um, Fast airstream user and a water type. You, you probably want a water type on a team, even though it's the sun team, um, just because you, you really want to make sure that you that you have a good switch into fire attacks that is not um, or water attacks that's not Venusaur. Basically, um, having a switch into water attacks is really important on a team like this because um, uh, because Venusaur is often going to be led when it's led. It's not really a Pokemon that switches around. That being said. Gastrodon could be kind of interesting. Um, 
only having one weakness and having like uh, another Pokemon that's good inside Trick Room is kind of nice. It's a second ground type, but that's not necessarily an awful thing. So uh, this is this team. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was something that I've been thought experimenting with, and that's Dialga. Um, Dialga, in my opinion, is the is the restricted Pokemon that benefited the most from um, Dynamax because its max moves are so good. Um, there's a few different ways you can run this thing. Um, you can run it with a weakness policy. You can run it um, with a life orb. You can run it with an assault vest. Um, a, this Pokemon gets very good coverage. It gets um, Aura Sphere, Blizzard, uh, Fire Blast and Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Power Gem. Um, it gets Overheat. I didn't even realize that. It gets steel beam it gets thunderbolt and thunder and trick room and this pokemon gets a ton of good coverage excuse me it also gets hyper beam which is a, which is a form of speed control where you can you can drop your opponent's speed um and it's a really good partner with whimsicott in my personal opinion because we've seen the power of dialga whimsicott or sorry duraludon whimsicott in the past and i think dialga is just a better version of, of duraludon it's superior to duraludon in every single stat which is just, just true. Uh, we can we can pull it up to confirm it, but I'm like 95% sure that, um, yeah, literally every stat, you you are superior to Duraludon in, which is obvious because you have 145 more base stats. But Duraludon was a very good Pokemon for a very long time in VGC. This 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 uh, in Sword and Shield, and this is no exception in my opinion. Um, I was doing some calcs with my friend earlier. And um, Dialga actually takes um, Zacian attacks pretty well, uh, specifically close combat. Um, if you get speed control for Dialga, whether it's Tailwind or whether it's um, Trick Room somehow, um, it can be a real a real threat. Um, yeah, we actually are faster than Dralodon as well, which is kind of interesting. So. Um, Dialga could be really good alongside Whimsicott. Whimsicott and Landorus are pretty interesting pairings with Dialga because they actually resist and pressure both of the things that Dialga's weak to. Whimsicott more so than Lando. Lando still resists them, but Whimsicott actually pressures fighting types with Moonblast, which they are not going to take very well. Um, I, I have Charm on here just because I this is an old Whimsicott set that I used to use. I think Protect is pretty solid too. But Fake Tears with Whimsicott and Dialga, is, you're going to just kill things. There's no way that... There's so many things that are going to die to Fake Tears plus a, a max move from Dialga. Um, I haven't really fleshed out the rest of this team though. I would like to have another partner for Whimsicott. I would also potentially like to change Fake Tears to Taunt or something like that. Um... But this is a place that I'm starting with, and I just wanted to share it with you all just in case you are interested in Dialga stuff. I think that Whimsicott could potentially be a very good partner for Dialga. Um, so that's some good places to start. Like I said, Tornogre, really good. Um, Venudon, as people call it, Venus or Groudon. This is a pretty good Zacian team. You could use Zacian on almost any team, though. Definitely don't take this with a... This is not by any means a shell that I think is... Really, I just think it's a strong team. I don't think it's the only shell that, that Zacian fits in. Where, like, you're going to be able to exploit Zacian's strengths in a lot more situations than, than like, you know, Kyogre and Groudon both come with their own um, benefits of weather. And so putting them on a team that can capitalize on that weather is important. Um, and I think both of these are really good options for that. So the last thing I want to talk about today is some Pokemon that are not restricted Pokemon that I think are really, really solid. Um, so I'm going to pull up another tab here. Um, I think these are Pokemon that, that we should all be considering. Um, some of you probably are considering most of these, but there's a couple of interesting ones on this team, so are on this situation. So I think that um, Incineroar is obviously just the best. Um, I think Incineroar is, is going to be a staple in this in this restricted format. It always has been, and it in restricted formats dark typing is really solid if we look at a list of the um restricted pokemon here um there's one two there's two psychic types here there's lunala there's um half of solgaleo actually all of solgaleo 
um, Eveltal, um, Zacian to some extent, and the Calyrex forms are going to struggle immensely against this Pokemon. I think now more than ever, you want to have a Dark Titan. Darkest Lariat is really good. I think it also gets Crunch. It does get Crunch. I like Darkest Lariat. Um, and you can actually afford to invest some in speed, depending on your item, of course. Um, but I think I think if you were to do something... Um, let's aim for the jumps here. This is a spread that I think I was working on before. Um, so 156. Um, 36. 4. Uh, I don't like that. I like even numbers, but I think I remember 36 being um, a really good speed stat for Electro Ball Regilecki with choice specs. But this is this is a really this is a pretty decent spread for um, you. Do need a little bit of speed in my opinion. Um, but Flare Blitz and Darkest Lariat. Just looking at the coverage here, super effective, super effective. Um, uh, super no neutral. Never mind. Sorry. Um, Super effective against Solgaleo, both of them. Super effective against Zacian. Super effective against Amazenta. Super effective against both Calyrex forms. Necrozma. Um, so, on top of being good offensively, um, you pair that as well with an insanely good defensive typing of Fire Dark. You resist Steel. You, re you are immune to Psychic. You resist Dark and Ghost. And you... Um, you are... Um, really good offensively against those as well. The things you have to be mindful of is you are weak to fighting. So close combat Zacian is going to hit you hard, and you also have a neutrality to fairy. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So Incineroar, very good. I would recommend using Darkest Lariat in this meta game. I touched on this earlier as well. I think Sakataka is really good historically in formats like this. Only has three weaknesses to my knowledge. Um, two of them are four times, so you have to be careful. Um, yep, three weaknesses. Water, fighting, ground. So two four times weaknesses, you got to be mindful of that. But... Um, this Pokemon gets Trick Room. This Pokemon gets Wide Guard as well. Wide Guard is really good in formats like this historically. Um, being able to save your team from spread moves. We, we just showcased two teams, three teams, with spread moves on them. Fiery Wrath, Moltres, Water Spout, and Origin Pulse, and Precipice Blades. Wide Guard's good against all of those. Um, and then Rock and Steel coverage, both really good offensively and defensively in a format like this. So... Dust off your stack attackers. Um, definitely Porygon is still going to be good, but stack attack I think is going to see some usage in a restricted metagame more so than previously. Um, some other Pokemon. Grimmsnarl. There's no indication to me that Grimmsnarl is going to start being bad. Um, Zacian hurts. Zacian will kill you through your screen. Um, we can confirm that if you would like, but I'm like 95.9% certain or 99.9% certain whoops, that you will get KO'd through Reflect. Zacian. Ubers. Sure, Choice Scarf's fine. Um, and Grimmsnarl. Even people aren't doing this with their bulk. People are doing um, like 252 careful um like basically in cinema spreads right 108 or 100 or 116 and then 140 let's say um and let's see you get a reflect up uh behemoth blade whoops Okay, well, I lied. I guess you don't, um, wait. Yeah. Why? Why does Behemoth Blade do less than Play Rough? Am I missing something? Behemoth Blade's a stronger move. Oh, um, does it matter? Guys, I'm really confused. Why? 
Why is it? Huh. Oh. That's why. There it is. I was really confused. Sorry about that. Yeah, so Intrepid Sword Zacian, um, it is a roll to Oko you through your screen with this, like, pretty bulky spread. Um, I don't know what people are doing with bulk nowadays, but um, basically you're just, you're suicide leading this thing to get your screens up, and it might not, it might only get you the one up. So um, that's that's something that does kind of suck for Grimmsnarl, but Grimmsnarl is still a fantastic Pokemon. Dark typing is really good. Um, I could actually foresee something with Sucker Punch coming back. Um, Sucker, Sucker Punch, Spirit Break, uh, Reflect, and Light Screen. Probably the best that you could be running. This might incentivize you to run a little bit of attack, but Sucker Punch could be really good against some of the some of the Pokemon in the metagame, depending on how popular Psychic Terrain is, of course. But I could see this being pretty decent. Um, so that's Grim Snarl. Still good Pokemon. No reason to think it's going to be really bad um, or it's going to get significantly worse. Um, I think that Urshifu still going to be good. Um, dark type more than Water type, but Water type will still be fine as well. But dark again, you're a dark type. Um, so as long as you have an answer to fairies, which Thassian will give you, um, Urshifu is a good place to to start um, with a good dark offensive type. Um, Moltres Galar, another really good dark type that's going to be really good. Um, not really much changing about that set. Um, I think that um, even though Incineroar is number one, I think Landorus is still going to be really good. Landorus D is still a Pokemon you have to be um, accounting for in your team building. Um, you don't want to get walled by Landorus. People are going to do offensive things with it. People are going to be doing um, uh, Assault Vest stuff with it. There's a lot of different spreads that work for Lando. Um, Amoongus. Another Pokemon that if, if Tapu Fini's usage goes down like some people are anticipating, it's really unclear what's going to actually happen with it. But if Tapu Fini's usage goes down... Amoongus is going to skyrocket and it's going to go rampant. And um, Amoongus is just a really good Pokemon. Grass Poison, coupled with this much bulk, makes it a really potent Pokemon um, to deal with for a lot of teams. Um, so that's Amoongus. Kartana, still going to be fantastic Pokemon. Um, I think Assault Vest is the best set. Um, Assault Vest with a with a heavy Spadef investment is a good is a good place to be. Um, I like Cartana. Um, and then Offensive Thunderous is probably still going to be good, especially on certain teams that you want the Defiant to work on. You want to deter Intimidates. Going to be going to be good. Um, and then we talked about um, Tornadus as well. Okay, so that's, that's some of the common good Pokemon that have been good for a while. But there's a couple of them that are coming up in the metagame, in my opinion. That we haven't seen much of some some potential sleeper picks there's four of them specifically that i want to highlight um the first one being togekiss now togekiss is not something that everyone you know obviously this thing ran rampant for a long time but um togekiss matches up reasonably well against a lot of these dark types um it has a good time against incineroar it was already legal at the same time as incineroar um it has a good time against urshifu great time against urshifu um, it has a good time against uh, Eveltal and against um, Moltres and against uh, um, Eveltal, Moltres, uh, Urshifu, Incineroar. Um, pretty reasonable time against Groudon. You get to you get to resist half of what Groudon's doing, um, or are you immune to it? Actually, um, Zacian is going to be troublesome. I'm pretty sure that. Um, Toge kiss with a um, berry, uh, battery berry. So you can live one behemoth blade and potentially get a yawn off. Um, but that's that's about it. Um, I think super luck is the way to go with with Toge kiss. Um, super luck and probably dazzling gleam. Um, protect, yawn, and follow me. You could potentially substitute protect for, or one of these moves for, uh, for helping hand, but I really like protect. Um, and you're going to go max HP. You're going to go, I like bold nature. 
Um, and I would aim for your jumps here. I'd go for your second jump. If I remember correctly, that's what I did. 36, 116. Or maybe it was 196. Maybe it was all the way up to 196. And then just a value value point in both of these. And then 52 speed. That seems too low. Maybe it was more. 116. Maybe this stat was up a little bit more. Like 140. And then maybe that. I have to look and see. But, but a bulky Togekiss is definitely the way to go. Um... And you don't really sacrifice that much as long as you have your Babbery Berry. Um, you'll be okay. So, wait. 156. That's what we said. No. Am I confused? Where does the jump happen? I thought I just found it. 116. Right? I'm clicking too fast. No. Nope. I was wrong, I guess. Does this not show it? Maybe it's bugged. Hmm. I don't know. I thought 116 was the jump. Maybe this is maybe this showed or maybe this damage calculator is bugged right now. Cause 116 for me. Oh, we're bold. That's why. That's why we're not bold. We're calm. That explains it. Okay. So, yeah, we're taking a little bit less than that. That makes sense. Um, so, that's... With Babri Berry, you could potentially get a Yawn off against Zacian. Um, and uh, then protect the next turn and put it to sleep. Um, it's definitely not a Zacian answer, but it's something that you can help, that helps you against Zacian as well. Just having that Babri Berry um, to guarantee that you live. So, Togekiss, definitely on the rise again. In my opinion, to, don't be surprised if you see it. I think it's I think it's pretty decent. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this Grim Snarl so I have room for these last three without having to delete anything. Okay, hot take number one: Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is gonna be good. Um, there's a variety of different sets that you can run. Tapu Koko did lose. Um, Tapu Koko did lose Sky Drop, which was a really big incentive to run. AV and Reggie Lucky does hurt this thing as well because Tapu Koko used to be one of the fastest Pokemon in the metagame that obviously changed with the addition of Dragapult and Zacian and things like that. <clears throat> but having that fairy typing is really good for the same reason why I think Togekiss is going to be solid again. Um, you actually resist everything out of Eveltal, everything out of <clears throat> excuse me, um, Urshifu, everything out of Moltres, everything out of um, or you you can hit Incineroar back for hard damage and resist any dark moves that it might have. Um, you still are neutral to Behemoth Blade, which is good. Um, and you resist close combat, and you resist wild charge, and you um, are neutral to play rough. Coco is going to be good. You can run Life Orb, you can run Magnet, you can run AV, you can run Light Clay. Um, but Dazzling Gleam, Bolt Switch, Thunderbolt, and then protect or electro web or something else definitely um could be could be useful here um and i think coco i don't think it's going to be s tier i don't even it might not even be a tier but i think it is just because it's a fairy type being able to offensively pressure the dark flying types like Eveltal and Moltres and the dark types like um urshifu while not dying to them in return is a big deal um potentially really strong as well so that's Coco. Um, I don't know how high this thing is going to be, but I've always wondered about this. It's actually Clefable. Um, the reason why is unaware. So now, obviously, Zacian is a problem. You can't really do much about Zacian, except for the fact that you don't that you don't take damage from it being boosted. So Clefable. So you actually you actually live, you actually have a role to live a no no Babbery Berry hit from Zacian because of unaware. If if boosting continues to be really prevalent in the metagame, I could see unaware Togekiss being a de or unaware Clefable being a decent follow me support Pokemon. Is it is it as good as Togekiss? Depends. Um, is it gonna be as good as Amoongus? 
probably not. Maybe maybe in certain metagames it'll be good. But I think Protect, Moonblast, um, Follow Me, and then it does get like Flamethrower or it, it can run Helping Hand for a full support set. There's a couple different things you can do with it. But I like Clefable. I've always kind of been intrigued by it, especially with this unaware ability, ignoring stat changes from other Pokemon. Okay, so that's Clefable. The last Pokemon I want to talk about here quick is a personal favorite of mine, one that I think is very good um, in certain metagames, and this one is no exception, and that is Mr. Volcarona. So Volcarona, um, everyone always gets distracted by um, Quiver Dance. Quiver Dance Volcarona is it's one of the few Pokemon that gets Quiver Dance that actually has the reasonable stat capabilities to um, to run with this. Uh, you see some support Volcarona sets running around too. Don't don't get me wrong, but a lot of people that I talk to about Volcarona are like, oh yeah, offensive Quiver Dance, like it's really cool. It comes off of 135 special attack, 100 speed, it can be a threat. You're right, it can be a threat, but Volcarona gets access to some really solid um, support moves and also resists everything from Zacian except for Wild Charge. Um, and 100 speed is actually a reasonable speed as well, um, where you you outspeed a lot of the restricteds. Let me, let me just look and see. The ones that outspeed you, Mewtwo, Lugia, Palkia speed ties you, Zacian, Zamazenta, Eternatus. And then Shadow Calyrex. So there's only seven Restricteds that actually outspeed. Oh, well, six of them, because Palki is a speed tie, and you probably won't want you probably won't want this thing against Palkia anyway. But I had some success in the past with um, Rage Powder, Heat Wave, um, Struggle Bug for special special attack drops, and then um, the last move could be Protect, could be Will O Wisp, could be whatever. Um, in this format, you probably have to run Max Speed. In previous ones, I didn't run max speed, but you probably run max speed, and then you probably put quite a bit into bulk, um, and then maybe you do like one a piece here. Um, previously, you may not need max speed. Like I said, you may be able to, to speed creep down if you're trying to outspeed certain things. You may not be able to go. I was going all the way to, when I used this thing. I was doing 180 because this outspeeds timid max speed. Porygon Z. And then I put the rest into bulk, basically. Um, I think I did something like this. Um, and this was able to outspeed um, Porygon Z and get off quiver, uh, uh, get off struggle bugs and reduce damage. I think Volcarona could be pretty sweet. I, I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here. But the typing is pretty solid. Uh, bug resists fighting. Fire resists steel and fairy. And then you're only hit by wild charge. That's assuming they're carrying it. Um, you also have a reasonable matchup against things like um, Sogaleo, Dialga, Groudon, um, the Ice Calyrex form you should be pretty decent against. Even the Ghost one shouldn't be that terrible. Um, but this is this is what I think is actually I think it's actually pretty solid. Um, you just have to find your speed set that you want to speed creep for um, to get off your your damage mitigation. And then kind of go from there. So um, I hope this helped. I hope this gave you guys some direction. Um, I am personally, I know how overwhelming it can be with such strong Pokemon available for usage. So in such an early undeveloped metagame. But hang in there. Um, it's okay to, if you're trying to be really competitive, I would recommend f using one of the strongest possible restricted Pokemon available to you. Um, I would also, excuse me, not shy away from things that work. So if you, like Kyogre plus Tornadus, Venusaur plus uh, Groudon, um, Zacian, uh, things that are proven to work and we know that they work. You don't have to do all this speculative testing stuff with T Tapu Koko and Clefable and stuff like that. If you're looking to just learn the format and pick up wins, I would recommend sticking with, a, with an archetype that is tried and true that works. Um, if you want to do some exploring, some of these Pokemon I listed um, could be a good starting point, or uh, potentially using some unorthodox restricted Pokemon could be a good starting point as well. But um, anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. I, uh, I'm going to go have some dinner here. So um, I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Um, sorry if I talked too much, but um, I think this is going to be a really cool format, and I'm really excited to play it. So 
Uh, thank you all for watching this far. If you did, I know it did get a little bit of a longer video, but uh, I appreciate the support, and uh, I will catch you on the next video. See ya.